All right, hello everybody. This is zero one of one again. Um, if you watched my last video, we went over serial communication. Um, we did a single byte. Uh, this was a setup. Um, I told you that I was going to go through and uh, put addressing in there as well. And so now we come up with this. This is going to be a setup for four bytes. Um, another thing that I did differently is I made the reset an actual part of the serial stream, whereas on the other one, it was on its own separate line. So just to show that it works, um, we've got 00 right here. We've got 00 right here. We're not going to reset it, but we are going to send in some information. So we'll hit those, head over here, and then we'll see if it works. And there it is. All right, so let's say that we want to put the same thing in 01. So we're going to take this, change this to 01, don't have to reset it. Hit send again, and then watch the magic. All right, so I'm going to go and quickly put this into the other ones as well, just because I can. And there is that one right there. And finally, we will put it into the final one. We'll send it. It takes a little bit of time, but that's all right. All right, now we're going to reset all of them. You can only do one at a time. Um, it's the same with, you know, when you're working with computers. So we've got that one reset. We're going to reset that one. We're going to reset that one, and then finally we are going to reset this one. Now as you can see I put in those commands pretty quickly and they all got executed properly. That is one of the cool things about serial communication is it doesn't matter how quickly or how slowly you put it in there, um, it processes each thing one bit at a time. So once you send in however many bits it takes care of them and then it brings it back. All right, so this is the uh, setup right here. Um, it's the same as the other one here. Um, this is the first one. This initially initiates the uh, everything behind the display over here. There's a lot of stuff back there. You're going to see it. Um, this right here is the solid input to a pulse output. Goes into here, sets everything up. And then this is the serial line right here. Goes all the way over here, and then it goes first into here. Now what this is, is another little memory circuit right here. And then this goes into another solid to pulse output. And then when that pulses, it sends it over to here. And then it goes in two directions. It goes over to here to make stuff over here work. And then it also goes back over to here to reset the memory. So that way you can accept the next piece of information that comes. Also, once that gets uh, finished, it goes to this uh, other solid to pulse output, which will then reset these little memory things right here. Now, these are the three first memory cells that this thing is going to get into contact with. This will control your first bit, your second bit, and your reset. And then um, I tried to make this as symmetrical as possible so it's easier to explain. And I've also got everything uh, color-coded. So if it's any kind of a blue, um, it's the addressing. So as you can see, we've got a little, um, you know, AND gates, NOR gates. And then you know, it just goes over to here, and then it sets up these things right here. Now green is data, red is interrupt, or reset, I should say. So once, if it is indexed to this location right here, it'll go through here, activate these pistons, and whatever um, information is streaming through will go through and actually get into the memory circuit over here. Now this is basically the same exact setup as what it was down there. It's just instead of one, there's four. So as you can see here, we've got the information comes in down here, and it goes off to these two bottom ones, and then it goes up through vertical transmission to these two top ones. And um, the data is uh, transmitted to all four at the same time. The reason that it knows how to store it into only one of these things is these pistons here, which tell it which one. All right, another thing that I wanted to do on the last one, I didn't really have time, was to show you the memory cells that I use. So I left this side open. Now this is a, it's one wide. It is four long. Um, I count this one right here as a fourth one. So it's one, two, three, four. 
you've got your input down here, it goes to a piston. The piston then puts up, pushes up two blocks. You've got another piston up here. You've got a constant output right here. So when this thing is hit and this goes up, it sends the output here into here. And that's how the memory is stored. And then in order to reset it, you go through here and you hit the pistons up here and then it pushes the blocks back down, which then interrupts the contact, which turns this off. So it's really, really helpful when you're doing things uh, as close quartered as this. It also saves a lot of space. And that's really about it. I mean, this is just a lot more complicated. Um, I've got some, this breaks it off into four different gates right here that'll go into the four different bits, or bytes, I should say. And then as you increase this, I mean, you're going to need more uh, calculations in here so you know which one to go to. But I mean, really, it's more of the same. Your timing has to be right has to be right. If your timing is even a little bit off, you're not going to get any kind of correct results out of this. So as you can see here, these four repeaters right here add to the timing. These ones just uh, kind of send the signal along. These ones right here help to control the timing. These ones up here help to control the timing. And if we go down here, I thought I had some more over here. Eh, oh well. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention is when in a reset is set through, it will activate this piston here, which will then block off any uh, communication through here, which will keep um, the memory cells from taking in information. So it's basically you're just short, short circuiting it. So that is pretty much it. Um, it. It looks big. It is kind of big, but still I can go a lot bigger. Um, this took me I don't know, six hours to do, setting up everything, and then, you know, obviously the hardest thing was getting all the timing right, but once you get the timing right, it's pretty simple. Pick a location that you want to send the memory to, and you send it there, it gets there, and everyone is happy. Oh, I've got the reset on. Ha. <laughs> Alright, let's try it one more time. There we go. Now it went to one zero. We've got one zero set up, so that is correct. Now I'm just going to reset it, and after that, that should be it for this video. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave uh, them in the comments. Um, I'll be happy to answer whatever I can. Um, if you're confused about anything, I will be more than happy to you know explain things to you. Um, it's it's pretty basic. It's just a lot to uh, try to keep tr control of all at the same time. But I mean, once you get it down, you never have to mess with it again. It'll work every single time. So that's it. Um, this is uh, serial communication in Minecraft. This is the advanced version using four bytes instead of one byte. And that's about it. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to making my next one next time.